Advent makes it simple to create and share events across emails, websites, and more. You'll boost visibility and attendance in just a few clicks. In this video, I'll walk through creating events and the sharing methods. So let's get started. So this is the Ad Event dashboard. You can see all of the events and calendars that you've created here. To create an event, you can click on a date in the dashboard and then fill out some of the event details that you can see here and create event, or you can click more options to be taken to the event create page. But I'm gonna do that by clicking create in the top right corner and then event. So this is where you'll fill out all of your important event details. There are a few different event types that you can create in Ad Event, so let's check those out quickly. The first is single event. This is an event that happens one time. A recurring event, which is an event that repeats according to a specific pattern. It's edited and shared together. And then an event series. Event series allows you to create multiple copies of the same event, but then you edit them, delete them, and share them individually. So. For this video, we're just gonna go with a single event. Now, let's fill out those important details. So the event title, we'll go with marketing event. And then we'll want to add a date and then change the time of the event if needed. And then our time zone. It's important to add a time zone to your event so that no matter where your audience is located, this event will adjust to the time zone that they have set in their calendar. So we'll set it to Chicago. And if anyone, let's say someone in New York, they go to add your event to their calendar, it's going to adjust that one hour time difference, save on their calendar, and they'll show up on time to your event. Next, let's fill out an event description. So your event description would go here. Then we've got the location. You can create a new location for every event that you have. If you've got unique Zoom links or um, you're traveling and there's different physical addresses, you can create new locations. So let me do that really quickly. This will be Zoom. And I want to have the Zoom link shown on my landing page. So I'm gonna put it right here, zoom.com slash that Zoom link. If I wanted to add additional location details, let's say there is a password for the event or something that you just don't want on your event landing page, for example, you could add those details here. You, so you could also consider putting Zoom here and then the Zoom link there. Um, but for this example, we're just going to put the location in the location field. Now you'll click that location that you've just created and it's applied to your event. The organizer information, this comes from the name and email of the user that's logged in creating this event. So um, if you want to update that for all of your events, then you would want to update your account settings. Or you can just type in, um, when you go to create an event, the organizer and organizer email that you want set for your events. This is a calendar alarm, a push notification. Um, this push notification will honor the push notification that your attendees have. So I personally have 10 minute reminder before my events start. So even if I add this event to my calendar, it's going to stick to my 10 minutes because that's what works for your attendees, let's say. So you can set one in case they don't have a setting and then this calendar alarm would go off 30 minutes before. Marking event as default, free, or busy. We recommend using default. Um, again, that will use your attendee setting. And that way, um, events are mark adding to their calendar as free or busy based on how they would prefer that event to be added. And then the calendar. You'll wanna make sure that you are saving this event to the calendar that it is meant to live on. You can always do this after the fact that you create your event, but here's where you'll do it from the start. Um, if you want to enable RSVP, you could do that here. Um, and then if we want to set an event image, we would do that here as well. I will go ahead and um, set this event image with an image that doesn't have anything to do 
with this event. Um, okay, now I'm gonna click create event just so you can see where the event image goes. So I've just created this event um, and the event image is going to be automatically added to your landing page as a way to take the editing and work of adding an image to your event for you. So any event image you add will be default added to your landing page as a banner image. Now we're on the event details page. All of the details that we've just added to our event are um, provided in a snapshot here. And then all of the sharing methods are below. So let's go through those. The first sharing method is the event landing page. Um, the event landing page is a way for you to share your event on social media. Um, you could hyperlink an image in your email with your landing page if you have a custom event image that you are putting in an email. Um, you can text out this link. It's really a way for you to share a link to your event and get your audience directed to your event details on a website. If you don't have a website or you don't have a landing page, this is a great sharing method because we've created that website or landing page for you. So I'll show you the default event landing page with an event image included. Um, but without an event image included, let me go ahead and remove that so I can just show you what that would look like. Okay, so this is a default event landing page with no changes to it. Title, date, time, description, location, organizer details. And then your audience can click the add to calendar button and add the event to their calendar. If you want to customize the look of this event landing page, you can use a an event landing page design template. You'd find those over here on your account. So I'm going to show one example of a design template that I've made. This is a two column design template. Um, there aren't any other changes that I made besides splitting it from one column to two. Um, so you can see the difference here. And it's the same thing, it's a unique landing page allows your audience to add the event to their calendar, just showing up in a way that um, maybe suits you or your brand um, better. So I'm going to reset that default design. It's nice you get a preview of the design that you've added to your event um, right here on your event details page. So that's the event landing page method. Um, next we have add to calendar links. Add to calendar links are created for emails, newsletters, and campaigns. You can simply copy these add to calendar links and paste them into an email, or copy this source code and paste it into an email. If you're using something like HubSpot, MailChimp, um, really any of the robust email sending platforms, we recommend using the source code so that your um, add to calendar links stay in the configuration that you've intended, which you can create any style. If you have particular colors for your branding, you can um, create a configuration and reuse that through all of your events um, so that you have nice brand continuity throughout all of the events that you share. Um, so let's show you how to copy. I'm just going to use um, Gmail as an example. And since I'm using Gmail, I'll just use this simple copy button. And then all you have to do is let's put our event details in the email here. And then we will paste these add to calendar links in your email and you could send that email off and it's simple as that. Your audience would receive this email, click on the add to calendar link, be taken directly to the calendar to add your event to their calendar. So that is the add to calendar links. Um, and again, when you share add to calendar links for a single non RSVP event, when your audience clicks one of these calendar platforms, they're gonna be taken directly to their calendar to save the event. Now let's go through the 
add to calendar button. The add to calendar button is intended for websites and landing pages. So if you've got a um, website built out on Squarespace, Wix, really any website or landing page builder, you can embed this add to calendar button using the source code um, into an HTML or code block. And then your add to calendar button will be available on your website or landing page to add events to your calendar. You can also create um, a style to be reused for, um, again, brand continuity, or if you just simply like the look of it. So let's save that configuration, and then you could reuse that. Next is direct links. Um, I really recommend that you use direct links only if you are sharing an event with a group of people that you know all use the same calendar platform. For, but in case someone wanted to save the event to their personal calendar or whatever the case may be, I just recommend using the add to calendar links or the add to calendar button because it's intended to get your event on the calendar of your attendees choice. Lastly, for sharing methods, we have the embeddable event. You can embed the event block onto your website or landing page using the following embed options. Um, and then this way, your audience can see all of your event details and not have to be directed away from your website if you wanted to include all of those details that you have. Instead of going to the landing page, you could keep them on your website and embed the event tile. Those are the sharing methods. Um, and then I wanted to share some quick other details about um, your events. So you could enable a password. If you did enable a password, I just want to point out that no matter how you share your event, even if you are sharing your event via email, um, without a password, again, if someone clicked Google, they would be taken directly to Google. Clicked Apple, they would be taken directly to save their event to their Apple calendar. But if you have a password enabled when you click Google or any of the calendar platforms, your audience is going to be directed to your landing page to fill out that password so that they can see your event details. You can enable RSVP here again as well. And then the analytics, you can view your event analytics um, from your event page. And then the unique key, if you're ever reaching out to the support team and you have a question relevant to a specific event, I recommend including the um, unique key or just simply copying and pasting the URL because that unique key is in this URL. Um, and that'll help the team identify what event you need help with. Um, so let's see, that is all things event creation and sharing. Um, if you have any questions about sharing events in ad event, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. We're happy to help, but we hope that this was helpful and we hope that your event is a huge success. Thanks.